ಚಕ್ಷುರುಣಮೀಷ್ಣೀಗುರವೇ ಸ್ವಯಂಪದಿಸ್ವಪದಿಕಂಪದನಸ್ಯಂದೇರಿಧ್ಯಾಚೇಪುಣಪುಣಸ್ಯಾಮ್ಮನಿಜನ್ಮ
अंगानी सकलेन्द्रिय वृत्ति मे पश्यंती पाती कलयती चीर जगंति आनंद चिन्मय सदुज्वल विग्रह से so here brahma ji is explaining now about the inconceivable potency of the lord he says i worship that original personality the supreme personality of god had shri gobinda his divine form is a composed of eternity cognizance and bliss ananda chinmaya he says that ananda chinmaya satujwala vigrahasya so his form is ananda full of bliss chit full of knowledge and sad with eternity and not only that further he goes and tells each and every limb or sense of his transcendental body is inherently endowed with all the functions of all other senses he eternally sees maintains and regulates an infinite number of universes both spiritual and mundane pashanti he eternally sees panti means maintains and kalayanti kalayanti means who regulates and what jaganti jaganti means universes so here how, how is it how things are inconceivable you can try to understand as in the first verse he establishes who is krishna so sri krishna chandra is ishvara what can what sort of a ishvara he is he explains that he is a parameshwara ishvara paramah krishna he is the supreme personality of a god and how is he anadir adir govinda he does not have a beginning not the end and he is the source of everything and he is govinda who gives pleasure ishvara parama krishna sachid ananda vigraha and his form is sat chit and ananda so his form is eternal full of knowledge and full of bliss contrary to the things in this material world in this material world all things are temporary all things are in ignorance and third thing they create sufferings for us so they there is a no bliss so with those things and if that is the nature of the things in the material world so anything that is getting controlled by this material nature definitely it is constitute of this three natures three things only whatever is controlled by this material nature is also having the same qualities non permanent lack of knowledge and there is unhappiness so with these things how is it possible to understand the lord who is sat who is eternal who is chit who is full of knowledge and ananda who is full of bliss further he says it is difficult to fathom his activities because there is no difference between him and his body being eternal and being a transcendental to this material modes of nature so lord and his body there is no difference 
But here in this material world, we and our body, there is a difference. As we are part and parcel of the Lord, so we are eternal. But what we possess, this body itself, is not eternal. It is temporary. So through this temporary body, it's not possible to understand the pastimes, the glories, the qualities of the Supreme Personality of God. Because they are totally transcendental to our, our conception. And that's why he says, Angani Asya Sakali Manti. Because he can see through his nose. He can maintain through his eyes. He can eat through his eyes. And we all have that experience. When we offer food to their Lordship, he puts his glance on that. And he takes it. He honors that. He enjoys that food stuff. And that becomes a mercy for us. So the person on the mandal platform, he can't understand this. And he may think that, oh, these are all concoction, you know. Some people who are in back eras, who are not having that much of knowledge or who are not that civilized, they must have concocted it. But it's not a concoction. To make us understand that, that it is not a concoction of some mundane person Brahmaji has already explained in the beginning all the shlokas up to the 28th verse. He has explained that how everything is transcendental, how everything is created in this world. And the person who ha has given this knowledge and who is praying to the Lordship is not a common man. He is the second creator of this whole universe, the first living ent entity in this world, in this whole universe. And he's explaining about that. So it's not a mental concoction. But people who are on the bodily platform of a life who does not have that much enough brain to understand the glories of the Lord, they may think that everything on this. Because beyond that, they can't go and they understand the things which is beyond their capacities. <clears throat> so let's read from the Tika or the commentary that has given by Shripad Jiva Goswami on this particular verse. So he says that Brahmaji has described both types of Leela of Govinda, the original personality. So in the beginning, he has already explained the first, uh, the second verse, Chintamani Prakara Satma Sukalpa Viksha. So what the Lord does in, in the spiritual world. So that pastime. That has explained. And second thing, the Alola Chandra Kala Sattva, <coughs> how he is engaged in his Leela Vilas. So his original past times of the original personality has explained by Brahmaji. And now, further from this verse to next four verses, which the starts from Angani Asya, he will explain the influence of Sri Krishna's inconceivable potency, Achintya Shakti. Achintya means inconceivable. And Shakti means potency. His hands and feet also have the power to see while his eyes, besides having the capacity to see, can also perform all other functions such as a protecting, nourishing, and so on. I remember one shloka regarding this actually. See, the, the living entities in this material world, they can perform different activities through their different senses. Like as explained in the Shrutis, uh, Darshanam Dhyanam Samsparashar Matsya Kurma Vihangana Swanya Patyani Pushtani Tathaham Api Padmaja. So in the Shrutis, Lord is explaining to Padmaja, means Brahma, that by vision, by meditation, and by touch only do the fish, the tortoise, and the birds maintain their offsprings. Similarly, do I also, O Padmaja. So Prabhupada explains about this verse. Uh, if you want, you can read this. It's in the fifth chapter, 26th verse. In the purport, Prabhupada, he quotes about that. So he says that the fish brings its offspring simply by looking at them. If fish can bring his offsprings by looking at him, so don't you think that Lord can do it? 
as explained in the second uh, canto of Srimad Bhagavatam that when the Mahavishnu he glances upon the Mahat Tattva, then it becomes live and it starts creating this material universe. So his glance does the work of impregnation. He impregnates this material world through the eyes. So that is his potency. So further Prabhupada says here, the eggs of the tortoise are laid on land and the tortoise meditates on the eggs while in the water. So similarly, a devotee in Krishna consciousness, although far away from the Lord's abode, can elevate himself to that abode simply by thinking of the Lord. So here, if any living entity created by the Lord can do all these functions, then why not the Lord? He's transcendental and his activities are about the mundane per perceptions. Then further, Jiva Goswami Path says, Therefore, it is said in the Shruti, Sarvataha Panipadam Tat Sarvato Akshi Shiro Mukham. His hands and feet are everywhere, and his eyes, heads, and mouths are on all sides. Sahastra Shisha, Purusha, Sahastra Aksha, Sahastrapa, Sabhumim Mishoto, Rutva, Tetrishtadashangulam. That's what even Purusha Sutta says. Now, in this word, the word Jaganti has used. So the word Jaganti indicates that he manifests his own Swarupa among his pastime associates simultaneously according to their individual bhava. And that he personally tastes the miraculous rasa of those associates through his own limbs and senses. All this can only be accomplished through the unique influence of his divine transcendental form. I remember one nice verse actually that is from uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto. That verse is Mallana, Ashnim, Dranam, Narvaro, Strinam, Smaro, Murpiman. When Lord, he entered in the arena of uh, Kamsa, the wrestling arena, where the Lordship performed a very wonderful and mysterious pastime, you know. So when he entered there, what happened? Mallana Mashnim, the wrestlers there, they thought that, oh, this boy is like a Ashni. Ashni means uh, thunderbolt, the weapon of uh, Indra. And nothing is stronger and harder than that in this universe. Mallanam, Ashnim, Nuram, Nuram, Naravaro, Strinam, Smaro, Murtiman. For the woman there, he was Smara. Smara means Cupid. So in one side, he was looking like a thunderbolt. The same times, for the women there, they thought that he is like a Smara, the Cupid himself. Srinam Smaro Murtinam. 
Gopanam Swajano Asatam. For Gopas, he 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 looks like one of them only. So it's said that uh, when he killed Kamsa, so one of his friends, he just jumped into the arena and he put Krishna on the ground and he, he was sitting on his chest. Can you imagine? The great kings who were assembled there in the arena, when they saw him, Shasta Swak, Shasta, they looked at him as a Shasta, the great controller, the great king amongst them. Kshiti Bhujam. Kshiti Bhujam means who has his hands like a horizon. Does horizon has any limits? So same way the Krishna's hands are so powerful that they can control what is there, whatever comes under the control of horizon. Yoginam Paratattva. For yogis, he's like a Paramatma on whom they were meditating. Swapitro Shishu. For his own parent like Vasudevan Devaki when they saw him for them he looked like a shishu a small baby who is totally depending upon them Mrityur Bhojapate when Kansa looked at him for him he looked like a death personification so that's the way the one person but when he entered in that arena so everyone, as, as explained here by Goswami Pad, that he says that the word Jagand indicates that he manifests his own Swarupa among his pastime associate simultaneously according to their individual bhava, according to their individual mood. As wrestlers, they thought that, oh, he's like Vajra. Same time when the women, girls who were present there from the Mathura to see that wrestling match, when they looked at him, for them he looked like a Cupid. So beautiful. A beautiful person can't be, who is a delicate, can't be like a hard, like a Vajra. But all this contradiction, they resolve in the Supreme Personality of a God. Because he is inconceivable. His potencies are inconceivable. And same person who was looking like a Cupid appears like a small baby for his own parents. So these are the particular bhavas or individual bhavas. They were expressed by the individual personalities who were present there for one person, and that is Krishna. And that's the glory of his inconceivable potency of the Lord. But still, we are being on the platform of this mundane level. We think all these are my myths or mythologies. And that's why most of the so called scholars of this world, our present situation, they call all these as a myth. And they think all these Puranas, Ithyasas, Vedic scriptures, they are mythology. They are just concoction or imaginations of some bygone people. But we should understand that here Brahmaji has clearly shown the difference according to the philosophical principle between the conscious spiritual substance, that is Chit, and the unconscious material substance that is achit and this verse and next few verses brahmaji has made a diligent endeavor to make us understand that pastimes of sri krishna's are not imaginations actually here the intention of brahmaji is to establish the transcendental form of Sri Krishna, which is composed of eternal existence, knowledge, and the bliss. Whereas all this phenomenal, the material world, and inanimate and composed of ignorance, 
despite of being this two being categorically distinct from each other the spiritual affair is factual to the original root principle and therefore variety and specific distinction must necessarily exist there eternally thus it is confirmed that krishna's form name qualities abode and the pastimes are transcendent and only those who whose consciousness is pure and sublime and free from all the mundane concoctions and connection with these mundane delusions are eligible to understand this past otherwise it's not possible so next in the next verse Brahmaji has explained the different attributes which are also inconceivable of their lordship but we need to try to understand them and we can understand them only by reading the prayers that has been offered by the great devotees like a brahmaji and prahlad maharaj and so and shrimad bhagavatam is full of all these prayers where it is clearly mentioned that how one can understand the lordship so let's see the next verse where brahmaji is explaining about the inconceivable characteristics of the lord and he says in the text number 33 <laughs> Adhyam Purana Purusham Navayavanam Cha Vede Shudurlabhama Adurlabhama Atma Bhakto Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Bhajami. Although he is non dual Advaita, infallible Achuta, beginningless Anadi. Possessed unlimited forms, anantarupam, the old of all, adi purusham. Nevertheless, he is a beautiful person with everlasting. Adyam purana purusham navayavanam. He is navayavanam means everlasting. Fresh youthful. Although he is incomprehensible through study of the vedas he is easily attended by the spontaneous devotion of the soul that is by shuddha prema by devotion by bhakti i worship that original personality of sri govinda so here his characteristics has explained the first characteristic of the supreme personality of a goddess that is he is a Dvaita. So what it means actually is non dual. Whenever people they think about the Vedic philosophy, then they think about Shankaracharya. And the philosophy that he has given, which is known as Advaita philosophy, non dual, where they think that there is a aikya between the Jiva and the Lord. And Lord because he get affected affected by the material nature so he takes the form and comes to this material and perform his pastimes and jiva if he performs the sadhana then he can become the lord that is the conception of advaita philosophy but that advaitism and what here the quality of lord has explained as advaita is totally different so let's see in the words of shankaracharya himself what he speaks about Advaita and that attribute, he puts it for the Lord Krishna. At the end of his life, he wrote one book called as a Prabhupada Sudhaka. And in that book, he explains what that Advaitism is in regard with the Krishna, how to understand that. So he says that here, Tadidam. Sarvam Devasya Neshate 
एषां स भावयत्याम यो अन्यथाम देवाम उपासते अन्य अहम मन्यो सावन्यस्थे नो वेद पशुवत्स इति उपनिषद उक्तिस तथा श्रुतिर भगवद उक्तिश्च ज्ञानी त्वात्वयम मे मतिर अत्यत्र युक्तिर अपि सो वेयर लॉर्ड सेज दैट आई एम दैट सुप्रीम ब्रह्मन होम द होल यूनिवर्स कॉल्ड इट एज एंड एवरीवन रिसाइड्स इनटू मी एंड स्टिल आई एम नॉट इनटू देम आई एम टोटली डिफरेंट फ्रॉम देम दैट्स व्हाट द श्रुति सेज so he says how there is a presence of the lord in each and every one how everything is lord only in other words vasudevam sarvam iti that is what advaita that is what non duality because everything that constitutes lord only because it is made up of either lord's internal energy or in external energy called as a maya the material nature prakriti or daivi prakriti the spiritual nature so in that regard everything is lord vasudeva only so that is advaita so he gives example shankaracharya he says rujam vaktram va kashtam cha hurta daksham sat agnita yati yat kinchit hasta grahyam ruj vakra sa satve api so just like any form of a would it may be if you put it in the fire it becomes fire so when jiva not necessary what he is actually by caste by origin by nationality but if he comes in a contact with the lord he becomes as pure as the lord so that is what the equanimity with the lord that is what advaita it's not that he merges but he becomes like the lord qualitatively quantitatively we are minute because we are anxious so if you take the drop of water from the ocean it has all the same qualities as the ocean has but quantitatively you can you can call this drop as a ocean you will call it as a drop of ocean so same way jiva eternally the ansha of the lord but qualitatively he is same as the lord that we need to understand but still lord has a four qualities which are higher than all his swamshas also like all the vishnu avatars and all the shavatars and those are those qualities are like his beauty which is uncomparable then his past times the activities that he performs then his uh, venu madhuri the flute that he plays and bhakta madhuri his love for his devotion these are most wonderful qualities that lord possesses more than anyone else so that that's what we need to understand so further the next word that the brahma ji has used for the lord mm, so let me first read the commentary given by Shri Bajiva Goswami on this particular verse. So, in the three verses beginning with the verse thirty-three, Brahma Ji confirms that Shri Bhagwan is possessed of extraordinary and unique characteristics. Extremely learned personalities who are fully conversant with all philosophical principles say that the supreme absolute truth is non-dual knowledge, which is known as a Advaita. he is the shelter of the impersonal brahmans known as brahma jyoti and of the all pervading super soul known as a parmatma the vedas refer to him as one without a second ekam eva advitiyam who is one without second for no one is equal to or greater than him he is a sama urdhva a sama urdhva means no one is equal to him and no one above to him or greater than him he has a no material senses and he is not bound by the results of his activities 
as everyone is bound by the by the reactions of their activities in this material world because they are controlled by the material world but lord is a controller of the material world. So that's why he never gets entangled because of his karma. So further, Jiva Goswami Path says that supreme transcendental reality is the fully independent, singular, non-dual, transcendental enjoyer, Bhagavan Sri Krishna. In regard to this, being one without a second, it has been stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, second chapter, 21st verse. It says that Swayam tu asmyas tisha yatra yatisha swara jalakshmya tasamasta kamaha balim harad bish chira loka pale kirita kotya yedita. Sri Krishna, the original form of Bhagavan, is the master of three potencies Sandini, Samvit, and Latini. These are the potencies, the Shaktis, the energies of the Supreme Personality of a God. No one is equal to or greater than Him. He is a completely self-satisfied. So what word they have used here for? Apta samasta kamaha. He is self-satisfied. He is completely self-satisfied in his own intrinsic form of a supreme transcendental bliss. All the demigods such as Indra, Chandra, Kuvera, Varuna, Brahma and Shiva and all the countless guardians of the world such as the Purusha Avataras of various kinds of worship, presentations and obeisances and they keep their heads which are decorated with the millions of crowns at his lotus feet. In one more verse, it says that Vismapannam Swasyacha Sobhargarthiha Param Padmam Bhushanam Cha Bhushangan. His pastimes were wonderful for everyone, even for those who are proud of their own opulences, including Lord Himself in His form as a Lord of Vaikuntha. Thus, the Krishna's transcendental body is the ornament of all ornaments from this verse it is understood that in order to show the influence of his yoga maya bhagavan manifest his own form of eternity knowledge and bliss in this world which is composed of five gross elements this material world is composed of us five gross elements this form of a Krishna, which is just suitable for performing pastime resembling the activities of ordinary mortal humans, is so beautiful and enchanting that even Krishna himself is thoroughly astonished upon seeing it. This Varupa, the original form of the Lord, the ultimate and extremely great fortune. And it is so beautiful that it beautifies the ornaments with which it is adorned. In other words, it is transcendental to all material comparison. So that's the explanation about word Advaita means. Now, Yuva Goswami Bhatt is explaining about the word Achyuta. So he says that Achyuta refers to one who never deviates from his own form, nature and occupation so what is the nature of their lordship he is a dina vatsala he is a bhakta vatsala he is a sharanagata vatsala so that's the nature of their lordship and he never gives up that at any condition he always keeps his word as explained in brahma in yuddha 
18th chapter, third verse, where Lord says that Sakuru Deva Prapanna Yatava Smiti Yachu. Abhayam Sarva Bhute Pyo Dadami Etat Pratam Mama. Where one says, Oh my Lord, I'm yours. The Lord says, I take care of him. I give him fearless name. I'm, I award him that. Abhayam. Immediately he gives that Abhaya. So that's the nature of the Lord. So he says further, in the Kashi Khanda, it has been stated, Ato Achyuto Khile Loke Ekaha Sarvago Avyayaha. His devotees do not fall down even at the time of the cosmic annihilation. Therefore, in all worlds, only all pervading personalities, Sri Krishna, has been called Achyuta. Sri Akrura has also spoken about the subject of Achyuta Krishna in his prayers. He says, Oh, today Kamsa has bestowed a great mercy upon me, by which all inauspiciousness in my life has been vanquished. The lotus feet of Bhagavan Sri Krishna have descended upon the surface of the earth. Now my human birth has become successful. Because today I will be able to go down directly to the lotus feet. Although they are the highest object of meditation for yogis. In ancient times, great liberated personalities such as Ambarisha, having attended just one glimpse of the radiance emanating from the nails of those lotus feet, have crossed over the insurmountable ocean of birth and death. Oh, the demigods headed by Brahma and Shiva are possessed all of appliances yet they never tire of worshipping those lotus feet which the supremely fortunate Lakshmi Devi worships instantly because they bestow all good fortune those lotus feet are also worshipped by the devotees and sages because they bestow the ultimate success of life and because they are an ocean of mercy, Sri Krishna's coward boyfriends serve them with newer and newer feelings of a deep love when he sports in the forest at the time of cow grazing. Those very same lotus feet are colored by the vermilion kunkumam powder from the breasts of the gopis who are full of the highest spontaneous love for Krishna. So similarly, in describing the glories of those lotus feet, Sri Uddhavji has also said, Yavai Shri Architam Ajadivhir Apta Kamair Yogeshware Rapiyat Atmani Rasa Goshyam the lotus feet of Sri Krishna are served by Lakshmi Devi, the goddess of fortune, and are worshipped in the heart by the self-satisfied masters of mystic yoga headed by Brahmaji. Yet at the time of the Ras Lila, the gopis of Vrindavan revealed the burning of their hearts by directly embracing those lotus feet to their breasts. So here you can understand, say that, what is the goal of yoga? Yogeshwar apiyad atmani rasa goshtyam. It says that, ajadivir apta kamar. Ajadivir means the great yogis like Aja, that is Brahma, and others like Lord Shiva and other great sages in who are up the Kamer, who does not have any other material desire, their desires are all fulfilled. So what they are looking for, they're looking or meditating on the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. 
which are worshipped by Mother Lakshmi. So the further Jiva Goswami Pad says, the glories of Sri Krishna's lotus feet have been described in this way throughout the scriptures. Because whoever takes shelter at this lotus feet, he becomes fearless. As explained, Bhaja Hure Mana Shri Nanda Nandana Abhaya Charanara Vindare. Lord's lotus feet are called as a Abhaya Charanara Vindare. Why? Because they give full protection who will take shelter at their place. And Lord has taken a vow. He never falls down from his vow. He never, and that's why he's a Achyuta. So he says that the glories of Sri Krishna's lotus feet have been described in this way throughout the scriptures. Similarly, Sri Krishna's transcendental abode is also beyond this world, beyond the illusory energy and beyond the three modes of material nature. For instance, Bhagavan gave Narad Maharaj and all the Vrajavasis a vision. Sorry, not Narada, it's Nanda Maharaj. Nanda Maharaj and all the Vrajavasis a region of the spiritual abode of Vaikuntha, which is transcendental to material nature. That abode is supermundane, composed of conscious spiritual energy, indivisible, real, self luminous, eternal, and the embodiment of truth. The great sage who have attended a state beyond the three modes of material nature are incapable of seeing the abode of a Krishna even in their pure trance. On seeing the personified Vedas offering reverent prayers to Sri Krishna in that world, Nanda and other Vrashavajis were utterly astonished. So further, Yoga Goswami Pad, he explains, Advaita Nachuta in this verse recited by Brahmaji. And now he comments on the word Anadi. In the discussion regarding Sankhya found in Srimad Bhagavatam, actually, as by the Bhagavad Gita, which is spoken by Lord Krishna to Uddhava, there is another Gita, which is called as Uddhava Gita, which is there in the 11th canto of Shamad Bhagavatam. So, there the Lordship has explained the further sutras or formulas that he has not, which he has not explained in the Bhagavad Gita, which is most essential for the person who has made really good progress in his spiritual life. There in the 24th chapter, text number 22 to 27, it has been explained about the Lord's wonderful potency, how that creates and annihilates the whole world. So here, Jiva Goswami Pad says, the verse Kalo Maya Maya Jive states that Sri Krishna is the origin of that which has no origin. He remains present in one Swarupa throughout the creation, maintenance and annihilation. Even at the time that Brahma and Shankara cease to exist, Bhagavan alone remains present. Although the universe is eventually destroyed, he remains absorbed in his eternal pastimes with his eternal associates in his eternal abode so that indicates the lord's abode is eternal not like this material world which get created which get maintained and ultimately get destroyed but lord's abode even though the whole creation maintenance and destruction of this material verse is going on but still he is there in his own abode where he is performing his pastime eternally with his associates Further, it is explained in this verse is that the annihilation has been described thus at the time of the cosmic annihilation. So listen carefully how the uh, annihilation of all this material world that happens that has 
very nicely explained here. So Srimad Bhagavatam is just not a spiritual Purana, but it also explains about all the material things, how they happen in this world. As in the third canto, we can see the whole embryology has explained. In the fifth canto, the whole universal structure has explained. Now, here in the 11th canto, 24th chapter, the destruction, how it takes place of this material universe, that has explained. The creation part is already explained in the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So here you can see how the annihilation, the destruction of this material universe happens. The Sankhya philosophy has explained here. Sankhya philosophy is none other than the analytical study of this creation and destruction and this material world has given by the Lord himself. So here Lord Krishna, as he has given the Sankhya philosophy to Arjuna, the second chapter in the Bhagavad Gita. So same way, the further Sankhya philosophy has elaborately explained in the Uddhav Gita to Uddhava. So here, in these particular verses, if you want for the reference, you can write it down. The 11th canto, 24th chapter, from text number 22 to 27. The annihilation has been described thus. At the time of the cosmic annihilation, the mortal bodies of the living entities enter into grains. As explained in the Bhagavad Gita, Annad Bhavati Bhutani. From the grains, living entity they manifest in this world. So where they goes during the first stage of annihilation, what happens? The mortal bodies of the living entities enter into the grains. Then grains enter into seeds because grain they comes from seeds. So they go back to seeds again. Seeds into the earth. So they go back to the earth. Then earth, earth is the manifestation of one subtle element and that is fragrance. If there is a no fragrance, no earth. So fragrance goes into the water. Water into the object of test. Then test into fire. Fire into the form. Form into the air. Air into the touch. Touch into the space. And space into the sense object of sound, which is called as a Nada Brahma. So everything in this world is created from Shabda. Shabda ke Paurusham Drusha. So that Shabda, the word, everything is created from the word. So everything goes back to again, word. So all the senses enter their respective presiding demigods. The demigods enter into the controlling mind. Mind enters into the false ego. And sound enters the cosmic phase of false ego. All the three modes of false ego enter into the Mahatattva. The Mahatattva enters into the mode of material nature. The modes of material nature enters into the predominated principle, which is called as a Prakriti. The predominated principle Prakriti enters into time. And time enters into the Bhagavan, who is the controller of Maya. And finally enters into me. However, my Swarupa, which is the cause of creation, maintenance and annihilation, maintenance and annihilation is never absent at any time. So that is the eternity of the Lordship. Sri Krishna has also been described as the oldest person in the following ways. So he has explained about the Advaitam, Achutam, Anadi Anandarupam. Now he is speaking about Adhyam, Purana Purusham. So he says, Ekastvam Atma Purushaha Puranaha. Brahmaji said, O Bhagavan, you are the only truth because you are Paramatma and you are the separate from this world of misleading appearance. You are the root cause of the creation, maintenance, and annihilation of this universe. You are the oldest person and you are eternal, perfect, complete and unchanging. You are the embodiment of a nectar composed of eternal peace and free from all mundane designation and the qualities of the illusory energy. You are pure, 
endless, indivisible, and non-dual. Now, in the tenth canto, Yadu wives of Mathura, they are also glorifying their lordship. What they are saying? Gudaha Purana Purusho Vanachitra Malyaha. Krishna is the eternal and primal personality whose lotus feet are worshipped by the Brahma, Shankara, and Lakshmi Devi. Avyaktam Vyakti Mapannam Manyate Maam Abuddhaya. You are unknown to ignorant people who harbor the misconception that you are formless, indifferentiated, unmanifest Brahman has manifest separately by the knowledge function of the illusory potency and has descended to the world in the Nanda Bhavan in the form of Krishna. And that's why you are confidential. Your original form is decorated with the wonderful garlands of forest flowers and you perform many varieties of pleasing pastimes while playing on your flute and plays, gazing cows along with the Baladeva. So these are the few verses. Those are quoted by Jiva Goswami Path from Srimad Bhagavatam to explain the each and definition of each and every word that Brahma has used for the glorification of their Lordship. It's not only that, the same person who is Adi, the origin of everything, who is a Purusha, who is the greatest enjoyer, but same time being Adi and being an enjoyer, he is Navayavanam, he is ever fresh and young. That's the glory of their Lord. In the first canto 16th chapter from text number 26 to 30, the wonderful qualities of Krishna has explained and they number more than 72 or sorry, more than 86 actually. And that's the particular form that Lord has, ever fresh and youthful. And that's the meditation of Lord Brahma. And that Lord is very difficult to understand through Vedas. And that's why it is said in Upanishad that it is said that Naiti, 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 Naiti. All the Upanishadas, Vedas, they speak about Lord. Oh, he's not like this. Oh, he's not like this. He's not like this. Because nothing in this material world can comprehend the transcendental qualities of the Lord. Even Vedas. So one has to come out of that. And that's why Lord says that Bhaktyaham Ekaya Grahyaha. Who is difficult to understand through the Vedic studies becomes understandable, comprehensible only by performing devotional service to him. In this regard, Bhagavan has also explained, Lord has also explained in Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th canto, 14th chapter, 21, first verse. O oh, Uddhava, Bhakti is the powerful method of attaining me. I am completely controlled by that devotion. But I am never controlled by yoga, neither by philosophical deliberation, adherence to religious principles, or meticulous study of the Vedas, austerities, giving charity, nor by any other matter. I am the super soul in everyone's heart, and I am easily attended by sadhus alone not by anyone else. This is because they have unadulterated and undivided devotion, which is born of their unflinching faith in me. So this type of exclusive devotion has the power of purify even a member of the caste of dog eaters. However, all qualities such as truthfulness, mercy, observing silence, following scriptural injunctions, austerities, and the cultivation of knowledge definitely cannot purify the heart of human being who is devoid of bhakti unto him. So let me read one verse from uh, Shibhat Shankaracharya. Very nicely, he says that you can't purify your heart by knowledge, 
by Vedic studies. He says, Shudhyatehi na antaratma Krishna badam bhojam bhaktim rate vasanam ivaksharo deir bhaktya prakshalyate chetaha. He says, Your heart only can get purified by performing devotional service to the Lord. Just like when you want to wash your clothes, you put it in the kshara uh, adbhi. Kshara adbhi means the salted water as we use acids and other things or washing powders to clean the cloth the same way. Bhakti is the only one thing that can cleanse your heart. And that's why Lord, it says that, Lord himself says that, purify the heart of human being who is devoid of bhakti. Without bhakti, you can't pure, purify your heart. And he says further, Lord Brahma in 14th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, where he has offered prayers to Lord Krishna, he says that, Pureha Bhuman, Havapi Yoginaha. O indivisible one, O Achuta, there were many yogis in the world in ancient times who, being unable to attain success in the path of yoga, began to perform their worldly and religious duties as an offering unto your lotus feet. As a result of this, they began to practice bhakti in the form of hearing and chanting the narration of your glories. Thus, they realized the essential reality of a self without by extraneous endeavor and without difficulty they attended the excellent destination of becoming your associates and that only happens by hearing about the supreme personality of a god because shravanam is the first process by which you can purify your heart and if that happens in the association of devotees then definitely bhakti increases as explained by kapilamani Satam Prasanga, Mama Viria, Sambido, Avantirat Kurmarasai and Akataha, Tajosha, the Shwapa Varga work money, Shadda, the Tir Paktir, Anukamishati. Satam Prasanga, Mama Viria, Sambido. In the association of devotees, if you hear about my pastimes, they enter through your ear and goes to your heart. Krishna Kurmarasainam, they becomes the elixir that goes through the ear and goes to your heart and what it does that purifies your heart as uh, chatush kumaras they glorified uh, prithu maharaj and this is that amala antaratmanaha this krishna katha that purifies your heart not just the upper level but from the bottom of your heart, it gets cleaned up. And then what happens? Shraddha, Ratir, Bhakti, Ranukramishati. That gradually faith in their Lordship. Then attachment to the, his lotus feet, his service about his chanting the glories of his name, chanting the glories of his activities. That gets increased. And then you attain pure devotion service. So it's like they are interconnected. If you hear about the Lord, that purifies your heart. And if, you, you know, if your heart gets purified, you would like to hear more and more and more and more about their Lordship. So let's keep that enthusiasm to hear more and more about the wonderful pastimes of the Lord. And then next Saturday, we will discuss the next words, which starts with, how there are different paths, they are accepted by the different personalities to attain their lordship. But which is the one that can give you the real destination of your life? Thank you so much for your patience. Hare Krishna. Sri Krishna Arpanamas.